Brooklyn Film Camera recently got me. They sent me an email saying they had this old, ugly-ass expired film, and I was like... Son of a bitch, took you this long to tell me? Break it out, man! It is time for a crap shoot, my precious little eggies. The film is called Seagull Color IR100. Mm. Must be Gulliver's favorite film. It's a Chinese 35mm film from the 90s. And according to Brooklyn Film Camera, the IR does not stand for infrared. It probably stands for irritated reptiles. And I gotta tell you, it looks borderline oh. apocalyptic. Based on how old the film is and maybe how it was stored, every Everything seems to turn yellow and brown and very smoky looking. And in my experience, some of the shots look like they have a rash. Ew. But hey, for less than $5, sometimes you get a rash. <laughs> this conversation is repugnant. Let's change the subject. I shot two rolls, so let's check them out. Check it out! The first was more of a test roll. I didn't necessarily have a theme in mind or anything like that. Just get a look at how cool these are. Very classy and rusty. I don't, I don't like that very much. I almost didn't want to put it in my camera. They have a very interesting odor to them. Mm. According to Brooklyn Film Camera, this film performs the best when you overexpose by two stops. So that's exactly what I did. I set my ISO to 25. <laughs> All I really had to go by were the sample images on Brooklyn Film Camera's website, so I was very much winging it, which is perfect since this is a crapshoot. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! I took my first view by the Tappan Zee Bridge. Then I went to the Bronx. I was mainly aiming for scenes with a range of colors. I was also hunting for texture. All this in my pursuit for radioactive, say it with me now, tones. Then I went over to Ferry Point Park. I love this view of Manhattan from the Bronx. In my experience, underexposing leads to more orange in the highlights and more green in the shadows. It's a pretty unique look. I think I prefer the dehydrated piss yellow though. <laughs> This film almost reminds me of the Mexico scenes from Breaking Bad, a way more yellow and intense version. Actually, when I was grabbing that clip for this video, maybe it's not that much more intense of a color grade than Breaking Bad had. All Breaking Bad really needed was the rash, and then we could say that it was shot on seagull color film. <laughs> Considering this was a test roll, I definitely got more than a few keepers. But these three are my favorites from the roll. I love the little pedals on the metal thing. Bars. And that was just the parking lot near my apartment. This house in the Bronx just made me think of the American football house, so I didn't really have a choice with that photo now, did I? And last but not least, this sunset in Long Island City. We had an otherwise overcast day there, but we got this split second of glorious sunset. I am very happy about how that shot came out. I finished the rest of the roll in Long Island City while I was hanging out with a few friends. Coincidentally, New York City would look like this shortly after I shot this roll because of the Canadian wildfires. Which is a brilliant segue into the second roll. I decided to shoot the second roll in Connecticut during the hazy Canadian wildfire arc. I was inspired by my friends who lived in New York City sharing their crazy Blade Runner looking photos. And while it was nowhere near as yellow in Connecticut, we still had a ton of haze. I figured this film would be perfect to document the conditions. These few shots in my apartment were honestly not far off from reality. The sun was really orange. I went to the parking lot of the local mall and I shot a handful of photos there as well. I really love this shot looking through the window. This was taken in the smelly stairway of the parking garage. It almost makes me think of a radioactive version of the Last of Us menu. The wider shots really conveyed the haziness in the area, especially these eerie sun shots. I liked the photos, but I was not a fan of seeing that in real life. I was kind of obsessed with these crows and getting a decent shot of them congregating around this streetlight, so I took a few.
You should see the f***ed up ways they like to crack nuts. I was happy with this world too, the standouts in my opinion are from the mall. They're all uniquely uncomfy in their own way. The amount of haze in this shot is really unsettling for me. How unnatural the sun looks in this shot is also very strange. And the window shot just makes me feel things. One thing I need to mention is the darkroom portion of these roles. These are meant to be developed in C41 chemistry. If you follow my channel, you probably know that I develop all my film at home. I have a video about it, blah, 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 blah. Not sure if it's the age of the film or what, but these negatives came out really thin. There are also this weird kind of blue, green, turquoise. I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see negatives look like this, but they have a weird like grittiness to them. The backside of the negative is textured and it's kind of disgusting, honestly. And even though they've been washed and it's been a couple weeks, they still kind of smell a little bit. They are extremely bendy. It was kind of a pain in the ass to scan these, honestly. And speaking of, the scanning process was interesting. Typically, I scan my negatives as positives and I color them in Negative Lab Pro, but it felt like my V550 didn't know what to make of these. It had no clue what was going on. If you watched my live stream, you probably saw how jacked up the positives were. I ended up rescanning them as negatives and let the Epson scan software take the wheel. It honestly did a fine job and my photos look like the sample images from Brooklyn Film Camera, so I guess I did something right in the process. I did make some minor adjustments in Lightroom, but nothing too intense. Overall, Siegel color is very unique looking, rash and all. I don't find it particularly practical, you definitely wouldn't want to be shooting someone's wedding with this film, but for five bucks it's a fun little experiment, especially when Portrait 800 is fucking $18 per roll. It's definitely not for everybody, but it's kind of fun if you go in knowing the look of the film and with some sort of vision. But what do you guys think of Siegel color? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon, bye! Like and subscribe, subscribe. Sweet, sweet Loop Photography. photography. Dumb man.